All right, we're going to continue with the word of the Most High. Let's go to Isaiah 64th chapter. Look at verse 1. It says, Oh, that thou wouldest rend the heavens, that thou would have come down, that the mountains might flow down at thy presence. As when the melting fire burneth, the fire causes the waters to boil, to make thy name known to thy adversaries, to your enemies, that the nations may tremble at thy presence. When thou didst terrible things, which we looked for, not for, and thou did terrible things that we looked not for, thou camest down, the mountains flowed down at thy presence. For since the beginning of the world, men have not heard, nor perceived by the ear, neither have the eye seen, O Most High, beside thee, what he had prepared for him that waited for him. You hear that? I'll read you again. For since the beginning of the world, men have not heard, nor perceived by the ear, neither have the eye seen, O Most High, beside thee, what he had prepared for him that waited for him. You know? He never heard it. Never heard it. Thou meet of him that rejoices and work in righteousness. That's keeping the laws of the Most High. Keeping his commandments. Those that remember thee in thy ways, behold, thou art wroth. But we are sin. Got a reason to be wroth. Because we have sinned. And those is continents. And we shall be saved. But we are all as an unclean thing. And all our righteousness, all our righteousness, all our following the law, such commandments of the most high, are as filthy rags. And we all so fade as a leaf. And our iniquities, like the wind, have taken us away. This is marvelous in the eyes of the Most High. And there is none that calleth upon thy name, that stirreth up himself to take hold of thee. But thou hast hid thy face from us, and hast consumed us, because of our iniquities, because of our sins, because of our wickedness, because of our, the evil that we have done before him. When he said, if you love me, keep my commandments. But everybody got their own power. They got their own way that they're going to follow. They believe in him. And not according to just what he said. You hear Isaiah saying, we're nothing, like, we're nothing but like filthy rags. Verse 8, but now, O Most High, thou art our Father. We are the clay, and thou art powder, and we all are the work of thy hand. So we like the clay, and he like the powder that's, that's doing what he said he was going to do. Go to 2nd Ezra 922. We like in his hands. Well, he sold us this. Second Ezra was 9 and 22. See, let the multitude perish then. The multitude of people perish then, which was born in vain, just for that number. And let my great be kept. In my plant, for with great labor have I made it perfect. You see? Most I said, with great labor have he made us perfect. Most I will, if we're part of that perfect that he's making, enduring to the end. Yasharala.
That's why it says in Isaiah 64 and 8, But now, O Most High, Thou art our Father. Abba. We are the clay. And Thou art part potter, shaping us. And we all are the work of Thy hand. As He's laboring to make us perfect. Be not wroth very sore, O Most High, neither remember iniquity forever. Behold, see, we beseech thee, we are all thy people, Yasharala. Thy holy cities are a wilderness. His holy cities, he said he's going to make them a wilderness. He's going to make them wastelands, desolations. Zion is a wilderness. Jerusalem, a desolation. The real Jerusalem is a desolation. Our holy and our beautiful house where our fathers praised thee is burned up with fire and all our pleasant things are laid waste. Who burned it? Who burned our temple with fire? Where's Ezra's Bible answers itself. Where's Ezra's 4 and 45? Thou also hast vowed to build up the temple which the Edomites burned when Judea was made desolate by the Chaldeans. When Nebuchadnezzar, the Ethiopian, the Cushite, the Babylonian came in to Jerusalem and took us into captivity for 70 years. The Edomites came and they burned our temples down. This is just written. Isaiah 64 and 11. Our holy and our beautiful house where our fathers praised thee is burned up with fire and all our pleasant things are laid waste. Will thou restrain, refrain thyself for these things, O Most High? Will thou hold thy peace and afflict us very sore? But you see this. Like he said in verse 6, understand this and overstand this. This statement, or these statements that the prophets made, show us what is marvelous in the eyes of the Most High. Isaiah 64 and 8. But we are all as an unclean thing. Is that including Isaiah? Yes, it is. And all our righteousness, all the things that we do in following the law, such commandments, the Most High, are as filthy rags. Wow. And we all do fade as a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, have taken us away. See? Including himself. So, prime example, that's Isaiah. I can go on to all the prophets. They mainly, they mainly, that's what they're dealing with. This is how they speak to Mosiah, all the way from Moses on. They speak to Mosiah as such. Not that I'm so righteous. That's what happened with Job. That's why I went through Job and showed you. Job felt he was so righteous that he shouldn't be dealt with. No, not what the Most High said in Isaiah. Uh, that it pleased him. The bruise of Mashiach, that was his only begotten son. Who are we? To think that he won't deal with us. That's why you hear him saying they're including himself. They include themselves. Look at uh, Isaiah 53 and 10. Yet it pleased the Most High to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. Mashiach Yahushua, his only begotten son. And thou shalt make his soul 
his body an offering for sin. See? That's his only begotten son. So don't think you know the mind of the Most High, how he should do this, that, and he should do that. That's why when you understand what I'm saying, I'm showing you solutions. Whereas it should change your continence and the way you think you are in dealing when the book is closed. This is what it's about. Because if you know, then you don't need the book no more. You don't need the book. You should be, I should be able to ask you questions. You should be able to answer all that's in this Bible. Precept upon precept, precept upon precept. If not, then you need to really think about self-examination. We all have to do this. Tear ourselves apart and to humble ourselves before the most high. Because his eyes are looking at everything that we're doing. Everything. We're going to give account of in the day of judgment. Believe this. So we have to really, you know, as much as is in us, do what we should do to please the most high. So it is not it is it is like uh, amongst each other we we get caught up in uh, our feelings, you know, and we can't do that because and some of you probably say, well, why aren't we all coming together? Why aren't we all together? We're not going to be together. Look at uh, Isaiah 51. And verse 8. Uh, 52 and verse 8. Salak. Isaiah 52 and verse 8. Thy watchmen shall lift up the voice. And we the watchmen. He called the men to watch over the flock. And we lift up the voice. With the voice together shall they sing. For they shall see eye to eye. We're going to see eye to eye when the Most High shall bring again Zion. We're going to see eye to eye when the Most High shall bring again Zion. You know why? Because the Master Jacob Shai is going to be the chief. He's going to be over us. And. You either going to follow what he say, do, or you going to follow him. I mean, it's, it's just this for everybody. Isaiah 60 and, and 12, for the nation of the kingdom that will not serve to serve him, serve thee, shall perish. Yeah, those nations shall be utterly wasted. You're going to be wasted. Point blank. You don't want to be, you want to follow him? You're going to be wasted. Period. So, it's very important that we we get ourselves together so that when you see go to uh, I Second Ezra the seventh chapter and we have to continue to look at this because it don't it don't hit home it haven't hit home because you have people that you come into this truth you come into learning the word of the Most High next thing you know you 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 are already there you think you are already in the kingdom. Because you'll learn some precepts. Okay, how much you learn? It don't mean nothing. We, what did he just say? Isaiah said, You more powerful than Isaiah? Mashiach Mashiach, he quoted from Isaiah when he walked the earth. He quoted from your verse? What verse is, uh, you got your name on it? Then when he come back, you're going to say, Just like you said in this chapter, in this verse, with your name on it. You heard what Isaiah said. And Ezra, Mosiah gave Ezra, started from the beginning. We done lost the law. We done lost everything. He started from the beginning with Ezra. He was talking and had the scribes writing. He said, hey, give this to the wise. Don't give this to everybody. Some things you ain't even privileged to. Give this to the wise and keep this from everybody and give this to them. Ezra had to get the law all over again. But we had lost it. This is what Ezra said. Ezra 7 and 49. It says, And what profit is it unto us, the children of Israel, if there be promised us an immortal time? I mean, like we've been saying, and seeing no more tears, no more sadness, no more pain, suffering, and so forth. That's immortality. Immortal, immortal time, 
Whereas we, got to hear this, whereas we have done the works that bring death, that we include himself, even though he's righteous. See? And that there is promised us, 12 tribes of Israel, the remnant, the one third, an everlasting hope. Whereas ourselves, including himself, being most wicked, are made vain. You gotta hear this. And that there are laid up for us dwellings of health and safety, whereas we have lived wickedly, we, including himself, you can't say that he's saying, hey, they have lived wickedly. But he himself is included. Like Isaiah included himself. And that the glory of the Most High is kept to defend them which have led a weary life. Whereas we, including himself, have walked in the most wicked ways of all. Do you hear this? Include Nazareth. I gotta keep saying it because our people are used to someone repeating something over and over again to get it. Some of you have, you know, HDHD. I mean, you got, you got problems. Spiritually. You really can't hear this. Because the spirits won't allow you to hear this. That's why you walk around in pride. No humility. And those demons rise up instantly. Ah, oh, you ain't gotta listen to that. You can't talk to me like this. You can't deal with me like this. When well, you have to be corrected. I did a lesson on how to take correction to the scriptures. The power of the Most High. It says, and that there should be showed a paradise whose fruit endure forever, whereas is security and medicine, since we, include himself, include Nazareth, have not entered, shall not enter into it. That's why you hear me saying, Most High will. I'll be worthy, you'll be worthy. We'll be worthy to see this kingdom. Not because I know what I know, or you know what you know, that you guarantee you to be in the kingdom. Verse 24, but we have walked in unpleasant places. And that the faces of them which have used after this shall shine above the stars, whereas our faces, including himself, including Ezra's, shall be blacker than darkness. From all the destruction that we done read about gonna happen. When you shoot these missiles, we can only think of into the ends of the earth. Where people's faces gonna be blacker. From the soot of the destruction. But while we lived and committed iniquity, while we lived, including Nazareth, and lived and committed iniquity, we considered not that we should begin to suffer forward after death. Including himself. Then answered he me and said, This is the condition of the battle which man that is born upon the earth shall fight. It's a condition of the battle you got to fight. But I, I say that, I went to Isaiah, I went to Ezra to bring you to this point. In 2 Ezra 8 and 48. In this also thou art marvelous before the Most High. He's talking to Ezra. Seeing this, for all of we in chapter 8. He said, hey, but this also thou art marvelous before the Most High, in that thou hast humbled thyself, first and foremost. It takes humility to hear what we just heard. Because everything that you say is before the Most High. Listen to what he said. In that thou hast humbled thyself as it becometh thee, and hast not judged thyself worthy to be much glorified among the righteous. You hear that? 
that's marvelous in the eyes of the Most High. But this also thou art marvelous before the Most High. Why? In that thou hast humbled thyself as it becometh thee, and hast not judged thyself worthy to be much glorified among the righteous. See that? That's what we just read. Verse after verse after verse. We, ourselves, Ezra's and those that are committing iniquity. For many great miseries shall be done to them that in the latter time, when the last days shall, shall dwell in the world, because they have walked in great pride. You gotta understand this. You can't be prideful thinking you all that. I mean, that's why the most I say he hate a poor man that's prideful. You ain't got nothing yet still. Yo, 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 dignity, yo, integrity. You ain't got nothing. That's why we need to do a self-examination. We have to keep doing this over and over again so that we can remain humble and look at what works. What's marvelous in the eyes of the most high? Your attitude? The way you feel? And everything is before the most high? No. No. We have to, and the spirit go check you to make sure that you on point, that you stay in order to be able to be in the kingdom of the most high. Your name can be written in the book of life. That's what this is all about. Need for great, for many great miseries shall be done to them that in the latter time shall dwell in the world, because they have walked in great pride. See? But understand thou for thyself. This is a key verse that I looked at. He said, understand for yourself, Ezra, and seek out the glory for such as be like thee. Who is like that? Who's like that? To seek out those that's what, that that feel like because they to learn a few precepts, they're not righteous than ever. See, you better understand and overstand. You know, the most high sent Satan after Job. And there's a reason why you look at uh, Job. So some of you feel that you are righteous. Because whatever kind of life you live in, but you think you are so righteous that the most high can't touch you. Job the first chapter. First verse. I'm not gonna do it. I've been over this before. You can read the whole thing if you want to. I'm just going to give you the purpose of thinking that you are all that. There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job. And that man was perfect and upright. And one that feared the Most High and eschewed evil. Okay? Now, now, there was a meeting with the Most High with his sons of the Most High, and Satan came among them, verse 6. And that's verse 6. Verse 8. And the Most High said unto Satan, Has thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feared the Most High and eschewed evil? So if Job is perfect and an upright man and one that feared the most high that she was evil why the most high ask Satan have you considered him <coughs> then Satan answered the most high and said does Job fear the most high for not does, does Job fear the most high fear you for nothing hast thou not made a hedge about him and about his house and about all that he have on every side thou hast blessed the work of his hands and his substance is increased in the land right but put forth thine hand, that's thy that left hand. Now and touch all that he hath, and he will curse thee to thy face. So Satan could not say this unless Job had done something to draw Satan to him. Understand this. Most high is not evil. He created evil for those that want to bring evil to them. That's why he told us in the garden, he said, hey, you can eat of all the trees. The tree of life was right there, you can live forever. But he said, don't eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And what we do, we ate of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. So therefore, we got these stringent laws put upon us. 
But we say, are you righteous? He made us righteous. But no, we don't want to be righteous. We want to be like the other nations. We want to be like other uh, I deal with idolatry like the other nations, idols and so forth. That's what this is all about. Ain't nothing new under the sun. Same thing over and over and over again. That's what we kept doing until this day. So it's some reason why those are here understanding the spirit, why the most I offer Job to Satan is a perfect and upright and fear the most high and the sure of evil. But yet still the most high offered up Job to Satan. And Satan told him in verse 11, but put forth thine hand now and touch all that he has and he will curse thee to thy face. And the most high said unto Satan, behold, all that he has is in thy power. Only upon himself put not forth thine hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the most high, right? So you understand there's no way that in the most high, when Satan came back to him, he, he, I mean, Satan went out and start killing Job's children and killed the uh, servants of Job. Got into the minds of the Sabians, like the, the spirit we read about. Got into the minds of all the prophets of King Ahab, King of Israel. So, Satan had his imps go down and get into the minds of the Sabians and the Chaldeans and so forth and do what it is that the Most High allowed Satan to do. So, let's see what Job was saying. So, the Most High, Satan came back to him and said, now you can touch his body, but you can't kill him. So, he put balls from the top of his head to the bottom of his feet, right? Let's see how Job's mind was, how he thought. We just read about how Isaiah, what Isaiah said. We just read about how Ezra said. Let's see what Job said. Uh, Job 33 and 8. Surely thou hast spoken in my hearing, and I have heard the voice of thy words, saying, I am clean without transgression. Hmm. Don't sound like what we just went over. That's marvelous in the eyes of the Most High. I am clean without transgression. I am clean. I had a word of the Most High in me. I had the laws of me. I don't break the laws of the Most High. I am innocent. Neither is there iniquity in me. You hear that? Behold, he found an occasion against me. He counted me for his enemy. He put at my feet in the stocks. He made mark of all my paths. Behold, in, in this thou art not just, I will answer thee that the Most High is greater than man. He told him, you're not just in what you're saying. See? So, you see here, Job thinking that he's, he's untouchable. He's clean. He should be touched. Most I shouldn't touch him because he's righteous. That's where he messed up. From what we just seen. Look at uh, Job 34. And verse 5. I'm not just saying this, prove it. But Job has said, I am righteous. And the most I have taken away my judgment. Should I lie against by right? My wound is incurable without transgression. Hmm. So, this is what you're looking at. These are examples of how we shouldn't be. Uh, So, let's look at uh, Job 38, verse 1. Then the most I answered Job out of the whirlwind, that cloud, that whirlwind, that IFO, and said, 
Who is this that doctrine is counseled by words without knowledge? Gird up now the loins like a man, for I, I will demand of thee and answer thou me. Where was thou when I laid the foundation of the earth? Declare, tell me, where was you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Declare, if thou hast understanding. Who have laid the measures thereof, if thou know it? Or who have stretched the line upon it? Whereupon are the foundations thereof fastened? Or who laid the cornerstone thereof? When the morning stars sang together, and all the sons of the Most High shouted for joy. Or who shut up the sea with doors when it break forth, as if it had issued out of the womb? When I made the cloud, the garment thereof, and thick darkness, a swallowing band for it, and break up for it my decreed place, and set bars and doors, and said, Hitherto shall thou come. But no further. You can go this far, but you can't go no further. And where shall thy proud ways be stayed? Hast thou commanded the morning since thy days? Or caused the day spring to know this place? That it might take hold of the ends of the earth? That the wicked might be shaken out of it? The wicked might be shaken out of the earth? It is turned as clay to the seal, and they stand as a garment. And from the wicked their light is withholding, and the high arm shall be broken. Hast thou entered into the springs of the sea? Or hast thou walked in the search of the depth? Had the gates of death been opened unto thee? Or hast thou seen the doors of the shadow of death? This is all of us. Not only Job, all of us. All you high-minded, right, old righteous Israelites and those of other nations, whoever. Hear the word of the Most High. Hast thou perceived the breath of the earth? Declare if thou know of it all. Where is the way where light dwelleth? Where is the way where light dwelleth when it's dark? <laughs> where is the way where light dwelleth? And as for darkness, where is the place thereof? Where is the darkness when it's light? Where is the place of light whenever it's dark? There's a place that light got to be when it's dark. A place that dark got to be when it's light. Where is that at? If thou mayest say it. Verse 20, that thou should have taken it to the bound thereof, and that thou should have known the paths to the house thereof, knowest thou it, because thou was then born, or because the number of thy days is great? Hast thou entered into the treasures of the snow? Go into the snow now. Or hast thou seen the treasures of the hell, which I have reserved against the time of trouble? Against the day of battle and war. We read about that. In Wisdom of Solomon 5 and 20 down. But what way is the light parted? Which scattereth the east wind upon the earth? Who hath divided a water course for the overflowing of waters? Or a way for the lightning of thunder? To cause it to rain on the earth where no man is on the wilderness wherein there is no man to satisfy the desolate and waste ground and to cause the bud of the tender herb to spring forth hath the rain a father or who have forgotten or who have begotten the drops of dew out of whose moon came the ice and the hoary frost of heaven who have gendered it the waters are hid as with a stone and the face of the deep is frozen. I, canst thou bind the sweet influences of Pleiades? Pleiades? Or loose the bands of Orion? Canst thou bring forth Maseroth in his season? Or canst thou guide a tourist with his sons? Knowest thou the ordinances of heaven? 
Canst thou set the dominion thereof in the earth? Can any of y'all do this? <laughs> Who can do this? Come on now. Canst thou lift up thy voice to the clouds that abundance of waters may cover thee? Canst thou send lightnings that they may go and say unto thee, here we are. Who have put wisdom in the inward parts? Or who have given understanding to the heart? Who have numbered, who can number the clouds in wisdom? Number the clouds in wisdom. Or who can stay the bottles of heaven? When the dust grow up into hardness and the clouds cleave fast together, will thou hunt the prey for the lion or feel the appetite of the young lions? That's what he let you know he does. When they couch in their dens and abide in the covert to lie in wait, who provided for the raven his food when his young ones cry unto the most high? They wonder for lack of meat. Knowest thou the time when the wild goats or the rock bring forth? Or canst thou mark when the hens do cow? Canst thou number the months that they fulfill? Or knowest thou the time when they bring forth? They bow themselves, they bring forth their young ones. They cast out their sorrows. Their young ones are in good liking. They grow up with corn. They go forth, they return not unto them. Who have sent out the wild ass free? Or who have loosed the bands of the wild ass? Whose house I have made the wilderness and the barren land his dwellings? He scorches the multitude of the city, neither regard of he the crying of the river. The rage of the mountains is his pasture, and he searches after every green thing. Will the unicorn be willing to serve thee or abide by thy crib? Canst thou bind the unicorn with his band and the pharaoh? Or will he harrow the valleys after thee? Will thou trust him because his strength is great? Or will thou leave thy labor to him? Will thou believe him that he will bring home thy seed and gather it into thy barn? Gave it thou the goodly wings unto the peacocks? Or wings and feathers into the ostrich? Which one of y'all did this? Did you think you righteous? Was leaving his her eggs in the earth and warmeth them in the dust, and forgetteth that the foot may crush them? Ostrich, get that they have laid eggs, or that the wild beast may break them? She is hardened against her young ones as though they were not hers. Her labor is in vain without fear, because the Most High have deprived her of wisdom. Neither hath he imparted to her understanding, that ostrich. What time she lifted up herself on high, she scorches the horse and his rider. Scorneth the horse and his rider. Hast thou given the horse strength? Hast thou clothed his neck with thunder? Canst thou make him afraid as a grasshopper? The glory of his nostrils is terrible. He paws in the valley and rejoices in his strength. He goeth on to meet the armed men. He mocketh at fear and is not a frightened. Neither turneth he back from the sword. The quiver rattleth against him, the glistering spear and the shield. He swalloweth the ground with fierceness and rage, neither believe he that it is the sound of the trumpet. He says among the trumpets, ha ha, and he smelleth the battle afar off, the thunder of the captains and the shouting. Does the hawk fly by thy wisdom and strength her wings toward the south? Does the eagle mount up at the command and make her nest on high? She dwelleth and abideth on the rock, upon the crag, of the rock and the strong place. From thence she seeketh to pray, and her eyes behold far off, seeing everything. Her young ones also suck up blood, and where the slain are, 
there is she. See, so, moreover, the Most High answered Job and said, Shall he that contended with the Almighty instruct him? He that contended with the Almighty instruct him, you gonna tell me what to do? He that proveth the Most High, let him answer it. And Job answered the Most High and said, Behold, I am vile. What shall I answer thee? I will lay my hand upon my mouth. Once have I spoken, but I will not answer. Yeah, twice, but I will not, I will not proceed no further. Then after the most high in the whirlwind to Job, out of the whirlwind and said, Gird up thy loins like now, like a man, and I will demand of thee, and declare thou unto me. Will thou also disannul my judgment? You gonna dis disannul what I've given to you? Will thou condemn me, that thou mayest be righteous? See? You could dimmer the most high and thinking that you are that. Has thou an arm like the most high? Or canst thou thunder with a voice like him? That thunders the most high voice. Deck thyself now with majesty and excellency. And array thyself with glory and beauty. Cast abroad the rage of thy wrath. And behold everyone that is proud and abase him. Not that I don't check you. You look out for those that are proud and bring them down. Look on everyone that is proud and bring him low and tread down the wicked in their place. Hide them in the dust together and bind their faces in secret. Then will I also confess unto thee that thine own righteous hand can save thee. See? So that's, that's, that's important that you see this. Job thought he was righteous. He thought he shouldn't have been dealt with for his righteousness. And we seen what he said concerning the Mashiach Kalashai. Now they asked the Mashiach Kalashai something. Only be God said. In Matthew 19 and 16. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master. Now we know that Mashiach of Shai did not sin. There was no iniquity found in him. But listen to what he says. And behold, one came and said unto him, For all you righteous suckers out there. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life. So let's look at the first thing of Mashiach Oshai addressed when he said, hey, good master. Let's see what he said. And he said unto him, why callest thou me good? There is none good but one. That is the most high. So you see how this all comes together where even though he definitely Without a shadow of doubt, or without spot, he still didn't acknowledge the fact that he was righteous. Because what's good? Romans 7 and 12. Hold that. You coming back. Romans 7 and 12. Wherefore the law, this is the law of the Most High, is holy, and the commandment holy, and just, and good. That's what's good. Listen. What else is good? 